Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a new product announcement video for the various new EastCoastArmory.com 1-6 scale German and American armor fighting vehicle parts that you'll be seeing in this video. All of the components are listed across the various catalog pages found on the ECA catalogs and they can be found with the direct links listed below. Also in this video we'll be going over some components and some sets that are not necessarily new product announcements but I might as well give them a showcase at this time as you know I have them on hand so why not. With that out of the way let's go ahead and get this video started. Starting this video off takes us to a brand new component that I recently announced on the ECA Facebook page and also have released on the ECA catalog. Here you can see the very first production unit now finally in hand. This is a component that I've been wanting to re-release and redesign now for at least 15 years and the original component itself that this one retires was first released on the ECA catalog back when I started the ECA catalog all the way in the far off year of 2005. This here is the M31C pedestal base. As I mentioned before, this has been a staple on the ECA catalog now since 2005, but that version was all made out of cast resin, and this one here is a very worthy successor being made out of 3D prints, and this component here really is an improvement in every single way from the older cast resin one. However, it's thanks to the cast resin one that I saw exactly where to I make the changes, and all of those bits of information and learned lessons have been incorporated in this unit here. So first and foremost, unlike the other one which was made out of cast resin, this one here is all 3D print. Also unlike the original cast resin one, this one here is all encompassing. So not just does it contain the pedestal base itself, but unlike the other unit, it also contains the support legs and the travel lock. These were components that were not supplied with the other unit and were something that had to have been scratch built by the builder. On this set over here, that's not the case. This set here is all encompassing, where it gives you the pedestal base, the legs, the retracting travel lock, and even, yes, all of the little fasteners required to pin and hook everything up. So there's a lot going on on this set here. If anyone's getting a slight sense of deja vu, well, that's because in the last new product announcement video, I announced a similar item. That item was a pedestal base, but it was the shorter pedestal base used to mount an MG on the passenger side of the Jeep. In fact, I have that unit right here in hand, and you can see exactly how much shorter the two units are side by side, as well as also just how much more simpler the, the running board pedestal base really is. However, outside of the length and the other detail differences, the most important part is the socket, and these are exactly the same because it's literally the exact same CAD file. As I mentioned in the other video, recently I went ahead and developed a number of the pedestal bases that are found on a multitude of US military vehicles. And just like I mentioned in this video, this unit here can fit any of the ECA 3D printed MG mounts that are found on the catalog, from the various types of 3050 mounts to even the twin mount, all of which will be able to be compatible with the unit that we have right here. Just like with the other one, the unit is out of the box, drilled out, so it's printed hollow, no drilling whatsoever needs to be exhibited, and the units are fully adaptable for use on the ECA sets. In addition to the unit being printed hollow, it also has the geometry of the locking vice type lever. And I even have that little scallop section that I reference in the other video. Unlike the other version though, this one here is much longer. And it has the support leg mounts integrally printed on. In addition to the support leg mounts, you'll see that the weld bead details are integrally printed on. And there are also printed in a drilled out manner. No guesswork is required at all, and this is a big difference between the Legacy one, where I had just like an indication point, and you were supposed to carefully glue each of these fins on in place. It was definitely doable, as I built a number of them, but uh, let's just say I'm glad the technology is at a point now where that could be something that could be left in the past. In addition to these 
support leg mounts here, we also have the mount for the travel lock, and that too has its well be detailing integrally printed on, as well as the appropriate geometry. On the bottom portion, we have here the travel lock mount, or I should say the, yes, yeah, the travel lock endpoint. And this too has its weld beads integrally printed on, along with the appropriate geometry, which would be again found on the real counterpart. On the very bottom portion, we have two support triangular ribs. And again, on the old one, these were separate parts that had to be glued on. And needless to say, weld beads are found as well. One unique feature that is found on this one that's not present on the Legacy one is the little data plate, which is right over here. And you can see it's actually riveted in place as it would be on the real unit. This is something that you can either leave in the over painted or over sprayed manner. But if you are clever enough, you could probably paint it and maybe, you know, put some detailing on this section over here to further enhance your soft skin vehicle, be it a Jeep or, you know, what have you. The real cool part, though, is with the support legs. This was something that on the earlier generations, again, had to have been sourced and scratch built by the builder. In the other MG videos, I talk about that you use two sections of plastruct angle, you glue them together forming a T, and then you basically cut and drill accordingly. That's not the case anymore. These here are pre-designed to fit and lock on to the appropriate locations. One thing that you'll see is the correct geometry with the cutouts. And one thing that's really cool is that one of the units, you'll see a notch cut into this section over here, and this is again as per the real units that I was using for reference. On the bottom portion, you can see all of the fasteners that are used to pin everything together, and there are some duplicates in case, you know, something were to get lost. The unit has a travel lock located in this section over here, and this is designed to hinge upward and lock into the ECA cradle. In fact, I'll throw a picture of the cat file where you can see the unit in action locking to the travel section on one of the ECA 3050 mounts. Here we have a component that's not necessarily a new piece. It's something that's been on the catalog now for a little while now. However, this is the first time I had the opportunity to bring it on camera. This component here is the ECA HD 3D printed M151 MUT instrument panel set. This component here is offered on the ECA M151 catalog, and it's offered in a multitude of different configurations. This one here is the simple format, where it is just the instrument panel itself, without any sort of other add-ons. And the other version is the exact same component, however, it does come with things like the starter and a few other components that elude me at the moment. You can see what the other version looks like in the thumbnails that should be popping up on screen now. These are intended to replace the ones that are found on the 21st century M151 1.6 scale MUT model, which is something I actually do intend on getting to. I have a number of them in the stash, but you know how my schedule is. Uh, it, it, it that remains to be seen, shall we say. Regardless, the component itself was released uh, about a year or so ago, and you can see what the detailing looks like on the surface. The piece is all made out of HD 3D print, so you have some very excellent crisp surface detailing to it, and it's translucent, so you can actually glue a backing to the rear portion of the gauges themselves, which will yield for some very realistic results. At some point in time, I do want to go ahead and actually make the gauge inserts, but that's something that remains to be seen. Hopefully, when I eventually get to my M151 MUTs, I can go ahead and finish off the, the set in that regard. Regardless, the piece is fully detailed where we have the gauges, the lights, or I believe those are lights if I'm not mistaken, and we also have the main mounting tray itself. Note it is fully replicating the real one with the correct stamp pattern as the proper inset that you can see here, and it even has integrally printed on the little dome head slot screw fasteners. Like I stated before, the way this is intended to be used, that you actually paint around all of the gauges, leaving the translucent material for the gauges on touch, which will, again, yield for some very realistic looking results. This set here has been, I should say, the instrument panel itself is not just found on the M151, but it's also found on a multitude of other US military vehicles from the 1960s, 1970s timeframe. And on a similar note, here we have another recently released set added to the ECA catalog, finally brought to you on the table. This is the ECA HD 3D printed US AFE post World War II taillight set, or specifically the lens set. When it comes to 
post-World War II taillight lenses, there are really two types of patterns. We have the original pattern, which came out in the years immediately after World War II, and those basically had a style very similar to the stamped sheet metal ones from World War II, but the difference were these were made out of aluminum and had an external flange with some bolts on them. As the decades went on into the 1960s and 1970s and onward, the U.S. taillight changed to the pattern that we have here. This would be the pattern that you would see on the M151A2 MUT, as well as also the Humvee and all the other vehicles that came afterwards, from trucks to the M1 Abrams. These components here I developed when I was working on my V100 armor car and can be found on the V100 catalog along with the other pattern of taillights that I mentioned before is the V100 utilized both during the Vietnam War. And during the development, I went ahead and released these components here in a multitude of different options. We have the ones dedicated to the V100, but we also have components where we have the taillights as a standalone feature, so you could use them on any vehicle or trailer that you may think of and we also have just a lens cap and that's the version that we have right here this is for use on just sprucing up just the surface area on a vehicle or a trailer of any sort such as again the 21st century m151 mud comes to mind these here are the same ones that are found on the other sets but are just offered with the lens exclusive the lens themselves are actually the exact same STL file that I scaled down and released in 116 scale, and I actually mentioned that in a earlier new proc announcement video, but for the Henlong M1 Abrams. Regardless, here you get to see what the 116 scale counterparts look like. So both of these components here are the exact same part, as you can see, and they have all of the appropriate detailing that is found on them. So you can see the top lens portion has the correct geometry to it. We have the mounting base that has its flange details along with the dome-headed fasteners integrally printed on. And we have the other two rectangular lights that you see right there on the lower portion. Because these are made out of HD 3D print, they are translucent. So if you're going to paint them, you paint the back portions with the appropriate color. And as you can see from my finger over here, simulating the red section that's painted, once everything is fully painted and installed on the vehicle, you will have some very realistic looking results. The pieces are hollow, of course. And on the other versions, they are in or, you know have the ability to be fitted with an LED. So in case you're making the thing RC, you can have LEDs rigged on the inside and your taillights can actually function. A similar thing can still be done with these ones here. You know, that just is at the limitation of the builder at hand and, you know, what they actually want to do with it. But because these are HD 3D print, they're translucent, and you can see they have a nice little cavity to them, you know, you could potentially, you know, rig LEDs in here if the builder so, you know, desires. These are found on a few different pages on the ECA catalog from the V100 page to also just the M151 MUT page, and they can also be found on the soft skin page, all of which, again, can be found in the video description listed below, where I have all the links to all the pages that contain the components that are mentioned in this video. Moving on takes us to a brand new item that has just been added to the ECA catalog, and currently on the table you see two examples of them. This here is the later pattern German tank cupola AA mount. This was an item that was designed upon request from one of my customers out there who has the ECA King Tiger MG ring copula detail set, but he also wanted to mount the MG34 to it. Well, I went ahead and designed the following components that you see here on the table. These pieces here are all 3D printed and come on this fret here that's all encompassing. The only other thing that's added are these two small little metal wire brads which are used to pin together the yoke system that's for the MG34. For the MG34, this set is designed to be utilizing the Dragon MG34, but should be able to work on basically any other 1-6 scale MG34s that are on the market. The component that you see here is designed to be as functional as possible, where we have lots of points of articulation, which is similar to the real one. So on the real MG34 mount, the unit would clamp onto that cupola ring found on vehicles like the King Tiger, the Tiger One, as well as the Panther G and the Panther A. And the way it's done is with this clamp mechanism that we have here. So you would loosen this clamp, and then you could just slide the unit anywhere along the ring that, you know, you deem feasible. 
the component, the clamp mechanism is not functional. That is just meant to be permanently attached in place and it just it fastens to the ECA ring that I developed a number of videos ago for use on the ArmorTech King Tiger and the Tiger One. But regardless, the unit will plug directly into those areas and the remainder of the articulation is found on the other sections of the mount. So this section over here actually would mount to this area and this thing can actually pivot left and right giving again some more flexibility. On top of this thing being able to pivot the entire A-frame over here would secure to this section and then this too can pivot in an up and down type manner. But there is still some more articulation with the yoke system. This pins into this area over here and you can pivot some more in this type of direction and it can also pivot left and right giving again way more flexibility. All of the parts here again are all encompassing. All of the fasteners required to pin everything in place are supplied and we have extras just in case you know as a why not type feature. Like I said before the wire brads are just used for the yoke section and the remainder of these 3D printed fasteners over here are used for the remainder of the pinning. Like I mentioned before, everything is an integral printing and basically it's a runner ready to go. As soon as you get the part, you can just snip everything off and start the assembly. This item here is listed on the ECA catalog pages, namely the ones for the King Tiger, the Tiger One, and also the Panther. One last detail to mention is the ammo can holder that would clamp into this section over here. Unfortunately, I do not have the ammo cans themselves, but if anyone out there wants to use any of the, the aftermarket ones, these should be able to be fitted in this section over here. While I also have the opportunity, here is another recently released item to the ECA catalog. This is something that has been on the catalog now for a little over a year, so it's a recent release, just not a fresh one. Regardless, the reason why I'm mentioning this right now is in case anyone is stumbling upon this video that has the ArmorTech M4A3EA Sherman kit or the M26 Persian kit, the following next two components are going to be very relevant for your build. Starting with this one here, this is the US AFE First Aid Kit. On the side of many very late war and post-war American AFE, they feature this little box that we have here. And this box is an armored cover that holds a first aid kit. The box itself was something that was originally listed on the ECA catalog since about 2007 or so, and was originally made in cast resin and contained a multitude of components in order to assemble. Well, within recent history, I went ahead and revisited that component, phasing out and retiring the old cast resin one for the unit that we have here. This one here, in comparison, is all made from 3D print, and also, unlike the other one, it's much easier to assemble because it's basically all built. The unit itself is all a single printing that contains the body, the guards for the latch mechanism, even the latch mount itself, the hinges, and the mounting brackets. All of those mentioned features are all, all a single printing. The features are fully detailed with their mounting brackets, with the welding that you can see on here, and the bracks themselves are mounted to their bosses with fasteners, which you can hopefully see pop up on screen. In addition to that, we have the top lid that has the hinge detailing present, again, with its weld beads present, and we could even see the little cabinet style latch mechanism right there. The hinges are all printed hollow, so the only thing you have to do is with a piece of wire or with a pin. The wire is kit supplied by the way. You just simply insert it in place, snip it to the correct length and you have your hinging operation. The latch mechanism is right here and this too needs to be assembled by the builder where you just hinge everything together with the metal wire facilitating the the job of the hinges as well as the actual latch hook itself. The unit as you can see is completely hollow. The only thing that's not supplied with the set is the actual first aid kit itself. This is something that I may revisit uh, in the future when I get to a vehicle that utilizes one of these sets. But for the time being, the way you see it is how it's listed. Another thing I want to reference is that there are two options out there or I should say two styles that are found on USAFV. This is one of them where we have the mounting brackets in a lateral format. And then there's another version that has a single bracket running down the center. 
either which were utilized on US tanks. It just depends on really your personal taste. For the M26 Pershing, again, just we'll look at some photographs of the real one in order to verify which style works best for you. Same thing also applies for the M4A3 E8 Sherman. Aside from those two vehicles, if you're working on a Chaffee, a M46, M47, uh, even the original M48, they all utilize the exact same components. Also, many standard DVSS Shermans were upgraded with these components in the later months in, in World War II and also in the post-war years. M10 tank destroyers and M36 Jacksons both feature this component prominently fitted to the side of the vehicle. So, there are quite a few vehicles that utilize this bit of equipment. Another ECA set of items I want to mention are the two components that you have here on the table. These two are items that have been on the catalog for a little while now. The antenna base is definitely something that's been on the catalog basically since day one, but the antenna base holder is a relatively new addition that I came up with about a year or two ago. So it's a you know, fairly new addition to the ECA catalog. But you know, finally have an opportunity to bring one again on table to show you everyone. So I'll start with the antenna base. This here is the ECA MP48 soft skin antenna base. This is basically a component that has been on the catalog since I started East Coast Armory. This one here has been in the following format now for about 10 years, so again, it's it's getting up there in age. At some point, I will be replacing these, but for the time being, the molds are still holding up pretty well, and they're still outputting good quality parts, so for the time being, you know, the old way is still the best way. The ECA part is a very popular item, I've sold many of these throughout the years, and this one here is the, the soft skin variant because it has the external insulators. The piece has a real spring on it, as you can see, and the component comes in the following format where it's pre-assembled. We even have here the two little fastener details on the top, and this would secure on the real one the antenna in place. The ECA set also contains the antenna itself. It has the knurled end connectors already pre-fastened on, and the piece is pretty much plug and play. You just insert the wire where it needs to go. You may have to trim it depending on how deep I drilled the hole, but regardless, it's, you know, mostly already there. And if anything, you may have to loosen these little sections up with a plier just to make sure the part fits in place. Then you, you press down on them with the plier to anchor everything down. But regardless, it's a very simple piece and one that has definitely withstood the test of time. In recent years, though, I went ahead and developed an accessory for this component, and that's what we have here. This here is the reversible soft skin antenna base mount. This is the type of mount that you will see on soft skin vehicles such as the Jeeps, trucks, Dodge cars, things along those lines. And the component is all 3D printed. The unit is as realistic as I can make it where we have the appropriate geometry where it mimics the stamped sheet metal look of the actual unit. And we also have here the segments found on these areas here because on the real one is basically one part that's metal and they just bend it to the following shape giving you the box and uh, you know format. The part is also removable or not removable but it's reversible where you can mount it either flush on the side of a vehicle like this, or you can even mount it in this type of configuration. That's why we have the mounting holes on the two sides, and this is depends up to the discretion of the builder on how exactly they want this unit fitted to their vehicle. In addition to the component, we also have here some mounting fasteners, and these are real brass micro fasteners, and you actually secure this thing to your vehicle with the following bolts. Both of these items are listed on the ECA soft skin detail components page and you can see that link listed in the video description below. Also, I want to mention that the units are sold separately and they are not a package deal. So if you are interested in picking up these items here, they are two separate items that are both listed again on the catalog. And for all of those who are watching who stuck around to this point in the video, I want to say thank you for that and in my gratitude, I have here a little bit of eye candy, and we're going to go ahead and end this video off with a product that is the furthest thing from being new. In fact, it's quite the opposite. This here is an item that has been listed on the ECA catalog now, at the time of filming this video, for about 11 years. So, this is a very old item. However, it's an item that's still relevant, and is obviously one that is still in full production.
And what exactly is this ginormous lump of parts that are sitting here on the table? Well, what you're looking at here is the 1.6 scale ECA Maybach HL230 engine with the Cyclone air filtration system. The reason why it's on the table at this time is, well, at the time I'm filming this, I'm actually wrapping up this set here for an order, and this is what the set looks like just prior to getting boxed up and shipped to the customer. On the channel, I've already showcased this engine on a number of occasions, be it when I first did the announcement all those years ago, where I have a built example to several other versions of the Maybach, you know, that have been built throughout the years for various builds that I've been, you know, use, utilizing them from the t early production Tiger to late production Tiger. And in regards to this one over here, most recently with the King Tiger that was built for commission. However, in all of those videos, you see what the unit looks like fully completed and in a way you really don't get to take away exactly how much of a effort it was and how much of an undertaking it was to design this set here and you really get to appreciate that seeing it in its unassembled kit format. So if you ever wondered exactly what it takes to build an ECA Maybach engine, here you go. Here's everything that is supplied with the kit strewn out here on the table. M almost all the components have already been pre-bagged in their bubble wrap and these consist of things like the rocker arm covers, the exhaust manifolds, the magneto tower, the oil tank that's mounted generally to the side of the engine. So, you know, this is exactly basically how the parts are bagged. And then from this point on, I'm going to go ahead and open up a big box and bubble wrap and, and protect things even further, just so it goes to its destination and hopefully arrives there in one piece. But yeah, as you can see, there are a ton of components that go into crafting and assembling one of these engines. Also, I just want to take the opportunity to point out that, you know, this is how things were done until very recently with the switch over to 3D print. What you're looking at here is as old school craftsmanship as you can possibly get. All of these components here are made out of masters that are all handmade. Zero printing, zero CNC, zero computer assisted, anything. Everything from the engine block to each and every one of the components that are found in these bags over here are crafted by hand with the use of hand tools, lades, mills, drill presses, as old school machining and old school fabrication as you can possibly get. Then the molds are all done by hand, and on top of that, the castings are all done, you guessed it, by hand. So this is uh, basically a look in a window of how ECA used to make their components, or it's fine, I'm using myself from the third person, but I'm referring to the company, uh, how I, you know, I would cast the components and, you know, craft the following sets that you see listed on the ECA catalog. So as you can see, 3D printing has definitely assisted and has, has been a very good asset since, uh, you know, switching over to that. But, you know, there are a lot of items on the catalog that are still made in the El Natural old school format. Uh, this set here is still going to be offered for the foreseeable future. At some point in time, it would be nice to phase out the old cast rest and engine. But for the time being, the molds are still holding up quite well. The masters are in fantastic shape. And until the need becomes around to go ahead and actually, you know, set this one out the pasture, it's still going to be listed on the ECA catalog in the format that you see here. Also, in case you're wondering, the answer is yes, an instruction sheet is definitely supplied with these sets, obviously. Uh, this is not something that you can monkey see, monkey do your way, like the, with the majority of the other ECA components found on the catalogs. This one here, you actually get a proper PDF file that has step-by-step -step from start all the way to completion. How exactly can you take one of these units here and build it into something that looks like, well, the picture that you should see right now on screen. And with that, that wraps up this new product announcement video for the various 1-6 scale German and American detail parts that you saw in this video. As I mentioned before, all of the detail components that were showcased here can be found in the various EastCoastArmory.com catalog pages listed in the video description below. And with that, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to subscribe to this channel where it's a great way to keep up to date on new posted content, being new product announcement videos like this one over here, or the other typical content, which would include small scale model showcase videos and larger scale project update videos when they frequently get posted. Another way to keep in loop a new post of content is by liking us on Facebook. There, I always 
post, actually it's the first place where I post new product announcements, as well as you can see photographs of the various builds, both small and large, that have been seen on this channel previously. Of course, don't forget to swing by eastcoastarmory.com where all these components again are posted, as well as many 1.6 and 1.16 scale builds and detail parts. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all again on the next one.